What's up everyone? In today's video we're going to give this ball tank some color. Let's start by priming the surface. I like to use a spray can on simple models like this. It's faster and I don't need to clean the airbrush afterwards. The result is a nice unified finish. The tank will be painted in Russian 4BO. I'll start with the Russian green from Mr. Paint, because I think it's the best looking 4BO on the market. This paint is airbrush ready, so you don't need to use thinner. This also means you need to spray it in several thin layers until it becomes opaque. Make sure the paint gets into all crevices. I didn't spend time airbrushing the track. I'll just paint it with rubber color later during the weathering process. Now we need to cover the model with heavy chipping fluid. Spray the fluid evenly over the entire surface in two smooth layers. This will give us a solid foundation for lots of chipping. The second paint will be a brighter version of 4BO. I'm using Tamiya XF21 to lighten it up. It's also important to dilute the paint so it becomes more transparent. For this I'm using Mr. Color Thinner, which I poured into a spare jar for easier handling. When the paint starts running down the sides of the cup, it's ready for airbrushing. I'm spraying it in thin layers creating random and uneven patterns. The shape of the tank made me a bit confused about the layout of this effect, but luckily it went pretty well. And now I'm going to chip the paint down to create texture. Applying water to the surface will activate the chipping fluid, lifting the paint above it, making it possible to chip. Keep in mind that this effect doesn't represent actual chipping. Its main purpose is to add texture to the paint job. Almost like color modulation, but with texture. I started experimenting with this textured base coat technique back in early 2017 on my BMP model. My main inspiration was observing colored photos of real vehicles, which have this multi-tone, faded, worn and distressed surface, making it sometimes impossible to tell which tone is the original color. That's why I started calling this technique distressing. I've seen other modelers paint their tanks with similar approach, and the results were, well, always really cool. The amount of chipping fluid underneath allows us to add more paint if we need to. Just spray your desired area and start chipping it down. Rinse and repeat. Literally. Now I wanted to give more saturation to some parts. I added Tamiya XF4 to the previous mixture and sprayed it randomly over the model. This gives the textured surface even more tonal variation. I needed to seal everything before the next step. For this I used AK's flat varnish. Although the result wasn't completely flat, it protected the previously painted layers. 
Okay, time for the second camo color. I'm mixing the Soviet dark brown from Life Color Acrylics because they are really good for both brush and airbrush application. The original 6K from Life Color is very bright and vivid, so I had to make it darker. I mean, <laughs> very dark. Like, it's almost black, but what are you gonna do? Anyway, I started outlining the pattern with diluted paint. This process is slow and needs a little bit of patience. Then I fill the inside of the shape. This is just the first layer, so it doesn't need to be perfect. Here I'm making a simple sketch of the largest amoeba. Yes, this pattern is called amoeba. Then I could paint the actual shape around it. This clip is going at 10 times speed. Like I said, it's a slow process. Now I fill the shapes with a second layer of paint. I think the result doesn't look bad at all. Here I'm spraying the model with another layer of chipping fluid. Because we need to give the amoeba some texture as well. The 6K dark brown was lightened up with some light grey from German grey modulation set. I sprayed this paint over the entire camo flash pattern. In some places I made a thicker, more opaque layer. I didn't worry about overspray. I'll show you why. But first, it's time to chip the paint down. I'm not that used to the chipping properties of light color paints, so the resulting texture wasn't exactly what I had in mind. But it will have to do. Removing the overspray is very easy. You can see I'm literally just brushing it off, just and it's gone. Hmm, I really hope this won't disappear after weathering. Now I can seal everything under a nice coat of clear varnish. This gives the surface a nice sheen, which will make applying the decals and techniques like washes much easier. So let's get these markings out of the way. What the fu Okay. I didn't want to use those anyway. These decal solutions from Gunze will make the markings really sit on the surface. I'm applying the mark softer first. This will you guessed it, soften the decal, which will trace the armor texture. Then I apply the mark setter to fix them in place. I actually wanted the markings to be yellow, so I simply repainted them with Vallejo Lemon Yellow acrylic paint. Painting with a brush gives them more authentic look, because they were hand painted on real tanks as well. Finally, I covered the markings with one more clear coat to unify them with the rest of the model and to protect them from weathering. The model is now fully painted and ready for some washes and oil paints. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you mates in the next one.